I'll do it again. So earlier in the last one, with the 36 inch sleeper build, we got this far from taking the section out, which I needed, which has made a shorter sleeper. But I divided it by a 10 and I realized when I've watched the video back, and working on a lot of temp scale stuff recently it was just habit to divide it by 10 so I've gone and recalculated that uh, done some maths here and stuff so we can get that correct and for a true scale but I did say it was off in the last one and would need a little bit more doing to make it to a true scale sleeper so we are gonna finish this off and make it into a true scale 36 inch sleeper now by removing the three centimeters that I've done it does in fact allow you to keep the rivets and your doors and your little locker box on the sleeper cap should you wish to keep those now there's nothing stopping you adding things later now I'm going to have to remove another 1.9 centimeters out of this. It's currently at eight and a half centimeters, and the full length of it originally was 11 and a half centimeters, but minus that three put us down to eight and a half. Now, a true scale, like one to one truck scaled down to 40 scale, the 36 inch sleeper then in centimeters comes in at six. 6. It's actually something like 6.57 or something like that. So we'll call it 6.6 .6. and for the little bit of sanding what you're going to shave in them points. So we need to remove 1.9 centimeters for true scale 36 inch. hinges on the locker these rivets but I'm not bothered about them because I'm going to get rid of those anyway and we're also going to remove those hinges those are going to end up having to be chopped off and I'm going to have to take a little more out of the battery tray which then means you wouldn't be able to lie your battery flat within the tray but there would be nothing stopping you putting velcro in there and it would still stand up or you could put some plastic hard in to make a brace or something like that so it's not an issue and we'll come to that when we get to that more for this one it's probably going to end up in three parts because i am going to have to remake the hinges and things like that so i'll show that in another video but for this one what we'll do is we'll get the extra 1.9 section cut out and then we're going to close it up properly and put it all together, fill it, smooth it and basically get the sleeper into prep phase and then in another video like I say I'll show you how to remake your doors and hinges and stuff like that so don't panic if you want to keep them it's okay to lose them they can be redone so I'm gonna chop this up now and then we can uh, proceed with making a true scale 36 inch coffin sleeper so first off what I'm gonna do is just hack up the batch tray and get that chopped it's an easy chop and um, basically I'm just gonna come back to this line and that's pretty much your two centimeters 1.9 and that way it leaves you mounting holes so you can still bolt this onto the chassis and you still have that hole there so we can still work with the uh, little brace to then bolt the sleeper cab to that later on so this dead easy like i say you've basically already got your guideline down here so you can cut against that 
and as I said you are going to lose a little bit of the batch tray but I can show you how to sort that so that's no problem whatsoever so this is just now special just a quick hatchet job basically <laughs> Now we can just run a bit of like sandpaper down there, clean that up, and as I said, we'll be able to make something to sit in there. Or we may have something lying around, may even be able to do it with old like parts tree stuff. But we'll show you how we can uh, make that. So if you're running a battery in your sleeper to stand it up in my rusty truck, which this is going back on, uh, I actually have my battery and everything all tucked up under the hood. And I just run the shorty pack lipos in that, so there's the first phase. That was the easy bit out of the way. Before we do actually move on, um, these two bits of scrap, I've just thought if we make a cut down there, not the curve section, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> Same on the other side. So now we've removed that lip off the bottom. Now all we need to do is uh, take that edge off. Same on there. Now you should have a couple of sections which look like that. And all we're going to do is glue those into place there and there's our battery tray, the standing battery in there. So yeah, that's that problem solved we using the bit we would cut off so that worked out nicely so there you go guys how to make a 36 inch sleeper battery tray <laughs> so now we have to take 1.9 2 centimeters off this I'm working with 1.9 I think it come out at 2 but like I say for the sanding and the cleaning up that takes that little bit extra out now I do have a scrub area but you don't need proper tools you can use the end of a saw you can even use an old drill bit to scrub should you need to and you don't have the tools you don't need anything fancy whatsoever all you need is an imagination and whatever you've got on hand and just have a go so 1.9 centimeters
So now we've got that all marked up. All around there all nicely. Now to chop. And there we have a guideline. Here we've got a clean scribed line out of there. So now I can just work in that with a saw now and just cut through the scribe mark as I have been doing in my other cuts and then it'll just come apart. Boom. So there's another section. Like I said, lost the door hinges or the locker hinges there and the little door hinges there. But We'll remake those in another video and the fresh hinges and stuff like that because there's the fret work to put in and we actually have to close it up which I'll show you properly what I've done here and everything but now when we put these together Obviously we need to clean up the excess there for it to all seat properly, it's just not letting it sit flush, but you get the gist. And now, it's much, much, much shorter. 1.9 centimetres shorter. Literally. Right, so before we move on with the actual sticking and filling and everything of the sleeper, I have just brought Rusty out to use as an example of what that will look like in a moment. Um, but first of all, I thought we'd just work on this battery tray and then we can actually get this bolted up in there. And then when we come to test fit the sleeper, we can actually bolt it up. So these was the parts that I actually cut off there like so and I took the end section off and just took a centre out of the middle it's not straight but it doesn't matter it's just going in the back of the sleeper now I don't even use the battery tray but I'm merely just going to use this as something to mount the sleeper my battery uh, I've had rusty out but I don't know if you can see up there I have a LiPo led down the front there. Uh, there's the back of my receiver. And the ESC is just on top of my servos there. And it all tucks up in there nicely. So, I've just gone and cleaned all the edges up on these. Give everything a good scuff. And what I'm going to do now is just glue those in there. Like so. And... This is like, this is a LiPo, but it's the same size as your ordinary impacts, which a lot of you probably run in your trucks. Now I run LiPo, and this, to give an example of size, will actually fit in there nicely. And if you're worried about it bouncing out and stuff, there is then nothing to stop you putting longer screws in these holes here and take the old pin like bolts out where the pins go in and again just put some longer screws in there and it's just going to stop it rocking about a bit more or if you're worried of it jumping out then you've got them in place so we'll get that in and to obviously mount it on the side they come with these which will go along the side and then you mount up both halves of the sleeper so I've just took 
the one I took off and with a hacksaw I've just cut it into three so I won't be needing the center section we've cut out but we now have a left and a right so when we put that onto there it should all just line up perfectly with the hole there so I'm just going to get this glued and held on with a couple of clamps and then once that's gone off I can put that in place there and then I'll give you a little example uh, so that's the little bracket there left and right and we have the original floor plan from the sleeper mounted in so that's now bolted on the chassis the glue is still going off slightly but it's in place so you can see there you go just comfortably fit a battery in there right now I've just held the sleeper together with a bit of tape but we just uh, put that over And I'm just going to screw this up. I've got a couple of screws here. So the tape and the cut isn't really doing justice at the minute. But once that's all filled, glued, smooth, sanded out. And I don't know whether to put like a little bridge between the sleeper and the cab. Or just leave the gap and put like I did on the rear of this cab. And put a piece in down there and fill all that. So it's just literally a separate compartment to the cab and then it's just working away of if you're going to be using your back door to get that to stay in there but it shouldn't be an issue to work with we can make something there so the back door don't keep falling out every two minutes but yeah it changes the whole look And that is a true to scale 36 inch coffin sleeper. You don't need anything fancy. Uh, you just, you can use what you've got on hand and using your existing cabin stuff. So I've just rigged this mantle, the sleeper off rusty from just giving you an example and now we can start prepping it to close it back together so now just going to give it a sanding and remove all these rivets I'm not bothered about them should I have kept it longer than the 36 inch where I had the rivets down the side and all the door I'd have kept them so for now we're just going to sand off the rivets it already is in various primers so I'm just going to give it a good flatten down uh, smooth where I filled there again just by sanding and just get it all smoothed I'm going to keep the little window there and the little one on the other side and I'm also going to keep the locker I won't be filling that so I'm using like a 150 200 grit sandpaper and this is just going to shave the rivets straight off So I'm just going to get them finished off and the rest of them rivets removed and we'll check back in a moment. Once you've got your rivets all sanded out, I have uh, got rid of the mould lines in the roof as well. But once you've got your rivets sanded out, you can feel that they are actually smooth. But once you've got to that stage, go over them again. And that way, you know that they are definitely smooth and they're not going to make any imperfections into your paint job later down the line now for this, this is off Rusty and Rusty is my working truck and is also like my demonstration truck which I do a lot of my how to stuff off so I'm not looking for anything 
quite perfect that's going to end up with a nice candy paint job or something on it and then you're going to end up with imperfections this is just going back on a working truck so it is ideal just to take your time and get everything as smooth as possible because no doubt if you're having a go at doing this yourself you'll probably be putting this onto a little work of art that you're building yourself so I'm just going to go over all the rivets again where they was and then I know that they have gone for definite being careful not to sand away the roof line there and the door lines but you can actually use the lines as a guide to come up against with your sandpaper and just run down the edges right so here is the section now of a uh, cleaned it all up and it's all dried off nicely and here is the part the cab end now I had showed in the last video I had used parts to make braces from just bits of scrap now if you are making one of these style sleepers then you are going to have a curved section that you have just cut out of that which makes things just a little bit easier for getting the other half straight because you haven't got much of a lip there to actually put a straight piece down if you get what I mean to brace against so it is handy to have a curved piece now this one did in fact come down a little bit too much where it was angled out so it was actually putting the pressure against the inside of the sleeper so I didn't want that so the black is I've just heated that up with a lighter and just carefully bent that back in so there is no pressure I'll just put a little lip there in the top as well just for a little added support so the two now come together like so So what we're going to do now is stick this together then we're going to line the inside once it's stuck together where the join is so when we come to filling it you're not forever going to be filling because it keeps seeping through here and you're constantly just squeezing it through so we do need to put something behind there just to like hold the filler against now I think I'm a bit short on Tamiya filler and Humbrol filler and stuff but uh, I do have some Vallejo, Vallejo uh, modelling putty which I can use it's a bit thin for my liking for this but it's all I've got to work with at the moment but it still goes off virtually the same it just takes a lot longer to go off whereas you can get some which go off a little bit quicker but it's not to worry it's a minor issue that we can work with still gets the job done and that's all that matters but it does it in a way that works as I said earlier you, you don't need all the fancy swanky stuff you'll see me building here there and everywhere I have a lot of stuff which I could use but then it might put a lot of views off who are wanting to build might actually put you off building yourself because then you might feel you need all that to do this well you don't need none of that my dad has a fully equipped workshop up there that I have access to so I could happily do videos there but then you would be put off by all the tools and everything else around and how many of you actually have an equipped workshop or do you just work on the kitchen side around the table so it's just questions I get like asked in the comments like on tool recommendations and stuff why don't you use this why don't you do that why don't you get this well I have that but probably 99% of my viewers don't have that 
So I just like to show people that you can do it if you don't have it. Anyway, let's crack on with this. Right, ideally for uh, this bit here, you're gonna want. Uh, I find glass is the best because it's so smooth, and you know there is just nothing that's gonna bite against it. It's, it's perfect for cutting on if you're cutting out masking and stuff like that, or cutting out vinyls, because the glass doesn't bite back, if you will. Whereas into wood, when you're cutting, you end up cutting into the wood through it, so it can leave like jagged edges. But for this purpose, I'm going to be tacking the bottom, but because we want it to all line up perfectly, a piece of glass like this is absolutely perfect. If you don't have access to a piece of glass like this, then if you just put your build off till your wife goes out and take the shelf out of your fridge and then get your jobs done get that shelf clean back up back in the fridge before she gets home I wouldn't recommend doing the cutting on the fridge though because she might notice that so then you will be in trouble won't you but this is alright it's going to be a bit of glue and it will uh, wipe off so so by using the glass, you can see we can get that to all sit flush at the bottom and the rest will all follow through. So what I'm going to do now, remember I've already scuffed everything all inside and on the bracings so we do get a nice contact with the glue. I'm using this modelling Yoohoo glue for this and we're just going to run some around the edge a little bit in the middle there same along the top and this side in that together and then we're just going to hold against where we've braced the sides there just to let that like grab remember we're using the glass so we have a clean flush surface on the bottom so it lines up as perfect as can possibly be the excess we can sand that off when it dries before we fill it so don't worry about any seepage of glue now I am just going to grab a couple of clamps and hopefully be able to get some clamps in there so bear with I'm just going to clamp this and then leave that for 10 minutes or so and in the meantime I'll go and have a cup of coffee so this is the side I had to like just melt round a bit and as you can see here it's still just giving a little bit of pressure pushing it out but luckily this is a cab just for demonstration purposes and it's just going on old rusty so do be sure to have those bracings flush luckily it is like less than a mil just a little bit there which we can get at with the filler and hopefully not notice but you can see the lines here all line up around the top of the cab there's a slight gap but again we are going to fill that now using some strong super glue because you want it to bond fast I'm just going to run a little bit down that crack and kind of pin the edges want to hold that for a minute just till it sets remember any excess and stuff you can always sand back off 
because we're going to be doing some filling and sanding so it doesn't really make a difference at this stage so I just ran a little bit of super glue now into that edge there which was sticking out and I've had it compressed again for another few minutes and I've left it on its own for a couple of minutes and it looks like the super glue has I don't know it's, it's done the job anyway now all the glue's gone off and everything else I'm going to fill these cracks and I'm just going to use some like extra thin styrene sheeting for that so this is what I'm using you can barely see it but it's easy to work with and you're not going to create anything that's going to get in the way of your floor plan there so all I'm going to do is cut them all to size and then get them glued on the back of there and I'll just use this super glue just because it's much quicker so there we have that we have the clear styrene there just stuck in place at the back and it's all gone off I know it looks a bit messy in there but you, you don't really see in there but that to stop me blasting that with primer just to hide it all so now the cracks now We've got this, which is a putty, and it's a lot thinner than the filler. But looking at it, I'd probably be more inclined to use the filler. Although the putty might be ideal in some of these deeper cracks there. But a lot of the rest of the small stuff, the filler should be just fine. I like to just work in small amounts. And basically what we're going to do is get the filler, like a little spatula. A bit of plastic will do and spread it over the cracks and then just start working it in So I'm going to continue and do that and just get the rest of the lines filled, just doing exactly that. So the cracks now all filled. So here we have it now. It's all been filled and smoothed out. Sometimes you may need to go over it again, but we won't really know until we hit it with the primer. These sections at the top here, they're definitely going to want going over. I can just feel that, but not an issue at the minute. The main thing is the sleeper is all constructed and put together. I'll just go over that little bit again just to make sure but you can see the fill line down the edge and once we've hit this with the primer you should never really know so I appreciate this is turning into quite a long video but I wanted to go through the whole process virtually from start to finish so this is cured and now basically got some 150 grit again and now it's just a case of taking your time and just lightly sanding all that filler off you don't want to go in too hard and dig at it or you'll start chopping it out of where you've filled it so you want to just like basically rest the sandpaper on and not applying, applying any pressure at all and just let the sandpaper do the work and I'm going to do this all around the cab in the fiddly parts up against the lines like I said you can use it as a guide just to start scraping those bits out of there and stuff don't worry about filling um, like your little compartment and things like that because we are going to fill it to so much and then remake new hinges and same for the door so 
lightly does it. It's going to take a short while. So I'm just going to finish this off now and then we'll come back once all that sanding is complete. So here's the sleeper now with all the filling done. As I've said I am going to have to do that bit again which I'm aware of but so far it all feels to be alright so I'm going to hit this now with some filler primer and then let that go off a bit and then flatten it down and then hit it with a little bit more but so far you can see how it's like one complete unit and with the styrene inside there being clear you can actually see where the filler has come through and is now resting up in place against the styrene and so quick dust in filler prime Right, I'll go and give that 5-10 minutes and then we can get another coat on there. Now remember this sleeper was already in a poor state, it's already got gouges and stuff, I haven't gone and filled all them so we may get some light surface scratch marks within the paint but they've always been there but you can see right, barely where it was filled. So we'll just keep building it up a little bit with the filler primer and then once we flatten that off it should look much much better. So it's had a couple more filler coats and then I just wet sanded it down to flatten it back and just put some grey prime on there. Do need to touch in them as I said and if you're watching my custom build at the minute you will know I have applied up to three or four layers of primer so far like filled it sanded it filled it sanded it and i keep doing that until it is perfectly smooth and the lines are completely gone but for this as a demonstration purpose i've just give it the one coat of filler but it still turned out all right but it would look odd if it were perfect once back up on rusty so i'll go and get rusty and i'll get another king caller cab just so you can see it side by side of what it was and what it is now and in another video because I'll need to get some um, real fine like one mil styrene strips uh, then we can come and make the door back and then literally just slice the hinges into it and this side here I've not worried about the filler yet because again we'll scribe a little mark there and same as the other side using some very fine styrene strips like one mil strips we'll stick another section down there and cut the hinges into that but that is guys a true two scale 36 inch coffin sleeper now I've left it open here I'm not sure whether to put some angled L shape and stick that behind 
so as then the ridge comes out to fix it back to the cab or just put a plate in and flush it fill it as I've done everywhere else and then have it as a separate box section so I've left that for now as I'm unsure so there is the 36 inch sleeper on the king hauler there is a king hauler cab it's actually on grand hauler chassis rails but there is a significant difference in the size so I'll do another one we'll sort out the doors and work out something just to put at the bottom of the back door to stop that popping off every two minutes so there they are side by side so yeah it has actually been quite a long um, episode video but I have wanted to go through that literally complete from the start to the finish apart from the first cut I'd already made to take the section out on the previous video but I hope it gives you an idea from the cutting to the sanding to the bracing it together sticking it together and filling it priming it etc and basically getting it prepped ready to go back on the truck now Rusty as you all know is an old beat up working truck is the truck I use to do a lot of how to videos with stuff like that so I'm not going for absolute perfection with this so I do hope that you get a good idea from that and we'll come back in another one as I said and we shall re-sort out those doors so again sorry for it being a long one but I hope you all can take some away from it and have a go yourselves and uh, create something different if that's what you're looking for but the measurements are there within the video on what to remove and stuff like that and yeah i'll catch you all in the next video so don't forget to hit that like button um, drop a comment feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell then you stay tuned of all the other videos that come out and if that video isn't for you then just ignore that notification so i'm going to leave you all there and sorry to bore you if it's been a long one so ciao for now guys <laughs>